Rehearsals are underway for the Boston Lyric Opera's production of Madama Butterfly. It's one of the world's most popular and widely performed operas. It's a tragic tale of love, heartbreak, and betrayal told through a lens of cultural stereotypes of Asians. But the Boston Lyric Opera is reinterpreting and modernizing the work. And here to discuss some of those changes is stage director Phil Chan and Keiko O'Rao, the recent head of the Massachusetts Office of Travel and Tourism. She's taking a special onstage role as Older Butterfly in the BLO's production. Hi, welcome to you both. Phil, let's just get started. Madama Butterfly? Yes. Okay, why Madama? It's Italian. Uh, in the original, it was a story about a 15-year-old geisha who falls in love with an American naval, naval officer and, uh, and is subsequently abandoned by him. So mm -hmm. uh, in the original, t there's a lot of uh, stereotypes about Asian people, Asian cultures, especially around women. Um, so this was really a chance for us to say, OK, that was one way we used to do it when we were Europeans, and now we're Americans. Yes, yes. Um, and we, we have a broader view of how we view Japanese folks. And so how can we give it a little twist to make sure the music that we love is mm -hmm. still being played, but the story resonates more for people today. So the original work uh, premiered in 1904, uh, and as you said, a lot of the themes from the stage there probably feel cliche and very dated to yeah. today's audiences. You know, we're, we're trying to say like, yes, diversity, equity, inclusion, you know, we want non-white folks into this art form, yet we're still presenting how our cultures were portrayed by Europeans, not even by Americans, by uh -huh. Europeans, you know, over a hundred years ago, and it's really not doing us any favors, you know, with trying to build new audiences mm -hmm. and trying to get these really beautiful human stories to resonate you know to a wider audience sure. so as an Asian person it was like okay I love the music but how do I get this right so that you know anyone can just come to this performance um, no matter what your cultural background is and say wow this I see myself on stage I, this story speaks to me so so the BLO has revised the opera and it's been through what is called the butterfly process yeah please explain what that means and the changes made for the Boston production sure so the butterfly process was a series of conversations hosted last year that looked at what's the problem with this opera and how do we find solutions to keep it going for the future. And we asked scholars and historians and performers and directors and all different folks from across the arts ecosystem to really look at this opera and see why do we love it so much? Why mm -hmm. do we keep doing it? What, what about the music is so timeless? But then what are ways that, that this work could be improved to ref better reflect who we are in this moment? And out of that conversation gave us a roadmap for how to actually stage the production for costume the Costume changes, Absolutely. also a part of the transformation? Absolutely, mm -hmm. and we've got some incredible costumes, um, beautiful sets. It, it really will transport you into sort of this Chinatown 1940s nightclub in San Francisco mm. Chinatown but then also take you to very much a real part of American history that isn't often talked about which is Japanese incarceration Japanese American incarceration um, here in the United States Wow yeah okay very important very important to learn about this so you know what prompted the change in this moment in time you know, I think being a, an Asian American artist and living in the past couple of years with this sort of heightened anti Asianness in our society, you know, just really realizing that our um, acceptance of Asian Americans is, is really thin veneer and just the, the smallest thing will knock us out. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, that was just really jarring. And so to then look at this opera and say, what can this story tell us about our current moment? Why, why would we do this opera now? And mm -hmm. what can it say? And how can I use this opera to show you a different perspective and, and share a little bit about um, another American story that we don't often get to hear about, which is, in this case, an Asian American story. So, so you know, on the other side of the coin, Madame Butterfly is a classic. It is. There have been lots of fierce debates over the rewriting of passages in classic books uh, to reflect the current times. So why do you think it's important to modernize this production. Yeah, I, I really like to think of my work as the opposite of cancel culture, right? Cancel culture would be saying, this work is inherently racist and we can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not what we're saying with this production. We're saying there's something beautiful in this music. There's something that is, is so human about what this story can be. Is there a better way to tell this story? Yes. What else could it be? That's my mm -hmm. favorite artistic question. So we just applied that framework to this larger opera and asked, what else could this opera be? Okay, Keiko. What else could it be? Explain your yes. role in the production. I was contacted by Phil and Nina um, and was asked to be a part of this amazing opportunity to retell this 
classic story in a way that is promoting um, awareness and also uh, authenticity around the Japanese American, around the Asian American experience, and I was I was thrilled to be a part of part of it. Mm -hmm. So, what was it like for you preparing for the show as a woman who has Asian American ancestry? Well, I am new to this world, and so I'm excited about this opportunity. And I think being surrounded by professionals who are just um, interested in being just real, uh, telling this different story. It's, it's an opportunity in time to have a reset. And I think that's where we're just excited to be part of history. Any um, internal personal connections for you as you were going through the process? So as I was going through the process, my family, um, my dad is Japanese. He was from Hawaii. He um, did, was not in the incarceration camps, but I have two uncles who were in the 442nd, which mm -hmm. was the all Japanese American mm -hmm. US military force during World War II. They fought with mil with valor in Europe. And so I have that connection. Most decorated in most history. Most decorated in mm -hmm. US American military history, history for uh, their size. And so I had two uncles very, very proud yes. of that Japanese American yes. heritage. We were at war with Japan, but my uncle signed up to say, we we want to prove that we are Americans. And there were, there were um, folks who came out of the camps who actually also signed Signed up, despite the discrimination they were facing with the camps, they signed up to fight for the United States and to say that they wanted their allegiance to be with the United States. So, so. very close personal connection for you. Indeed. Mm -hmm. um, we're almost out of time. Why is the telling of Asian American Center stories so important, Phil? I think we just broaden the center, right? So, and when we can see the world through multiple perspectives, I mean, how many of us um, are biracial or have a partner who's a different culture than us? You know, we're becoming a much, um, much bigger as a society and we see the world in a much bigger way. And so we need our art to reflect this change, right? You know, um, and so, when we make better art with a larger center that sees a perspective from someone than our own, it gives us a chance to build empathy for somebody who isn't in your shoes, mm -hmm. right? And that's what good art does. So yeah, I might not understand the black experience, but if I go to a show, I get a little taste so that we can see each other better. Or if maybe you don't really know too much about Asian Americans. Come and learn. Come and learn. Come and learn. Okay. This is for you. Keiko Oral, thank you so much for sharing that bit of your family history. I very much appreciate it. Absolutely. Okay, Phil. Um, Thank you as well. All right, everybody, Madama Butterfly is on stage at the Emerson Colonial Theater this Thursday, September 14th through Sunday, September 24th. Up next, to be or not to be, Hamlet Reimagined will have a preview of the Pulitzer Prize winning play Fat Ham. That's next.